All right, Rafael Ortega is in the house with his wife, Yermati. How are you? Hi, Pastor Jing. <laughs> Very good. You've been practicing that all day, haven't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your English is much better than, than my Spanish. Let's, uh, let's get our translator on board here and, uh, and see if we can't get you guys connected here. Hold on one second. Let's get you over here. You're going to be our translator for the evening uh, so that uh, Raphael can, and his wife can, can speak in their native tongue and, and be a lot easier on them. And so, uh, and Raphael, you can speak in English, you can speak in Spanish, you, can, you, can, you guys can do however you want to do. Um, but I know this has been an unbelievable journey for you guys. Every one of us are on <clears throat> a journey and, uh, our journeys seem to intersect at different time in different places. And, uh, it just seems like the father just continues to, to keep us in contact with one another. Um, but I do want to talk to your Mahdi for a second, because I need to verify that this is actually your husband because I don't recognize him at all without his goatee. So are we sure this is Rafael Ortega from the Chicago Cubs? Because you don't look like the Rafael that I met uh, not too long ago. I see that you shaved all that off, my friend. Yes, yeah. I just take it off. Looking a little younger. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you look like you did whenever you first started playing baseball. Praise the Lord. All yeah. right. Well, listen. To get back to the yeah. So, where are you guys right now? Tell us what's going on, and uh, we'll go from there. Tell us what's going on in the physical life right now, because I know you're not even in the United States. But, but what's happening? So we're in Bogota right now, Colombia, trying to get the the, the visa, the new visa, to get back to the United States. But we have to stay here because of the those teams that is happening right now with the MLB and the Players Association. So we have to wait here till those teams end. Gotcha. So basically there is an argument between the Major League Baseball Association and the Players Association. They can't come to an agreement. If you're watching the news in the United States, you know that. If you're a baseball uh, fan, that they've even pushed off spring training until, I believe, March 5th. Uh, which uh, so we'll see what happens with that and and so Raphael and his family are kind of in limbo in Colombia waiting for this decision to to be made so they can come back to the United States. So in the meantime, how are you guys keeping yourself busy over there in Bogota? Mm, okay, yo yo lo quiero hacer un poco más en español porque sé que hay mucha audiencia en español y yo quiero que esa audiencia nos escuche a nosotros hablando en español. Okay, he says that he just preferred to do it in Spanish because he knows there is a huge audience that wants to hear him speak in Spanish. Absolutely. Okay. Y, y bueno, este nuestro tiempo aquí en, en Bogotá, simplemente eh, yo me estoy tratando de mantener, me mantengo entrenando, voy al gimnasio, eh, no tengo un estadio como tal para entrenar bateo y soltar el brazo, pero sí voy al gimnasio y bueno, aprovecho el el tiempo para pasar con mi esposa y mis hijos porque ya una vez que comienza la temporada el tiempo que nosotros pasamos juntos es bien limitado dame chance dame chance all right so basically <laughs> i'm trying to be here i'm trying to be here in bogota colombia trying to keep myself together you know doing some some training warming up every single day uh trying to spend time with the family and i know that i don't have a basically i don't have a stadium like to be on, on practice in a real field but still, I keep doing my, my workouts, you know, just to be in shape and ready for the, for, the, for the next season. Gotcha. So are you, are you hearing anything behind the scenes? Are, are they really going to come to an agreement here soon so that you guys can get on with playing Major League Baseball? What, what are you hearing? Eh, bueno, lo que hemos escuchado hasta los momentos es que ellos van a se están reuniendo toda esta semana. Eh, no han llegado a un acuerdo todavía, hay algunas cláusulas que la asociación está proponiendo que no que los dueños de equipo no, no, no están de acuerdo, entonces se, supuestamente se, están, se van a tratar de, de reunir toda esta semana a ver si finalmente llegan a un acuerdo a, al final de, de, de la semana, pero no, no tenemos nada concreto todavía y seguimos esperando. 
Okay, so the player association is having a few meetings, you know, the team owners and the, and the, and the league trying to see if they're going to see each other on the, on the same page. Different regulations, different rules, they're just, they're just trying to come to a common point where they can get along and put it through. Okay, so in the but meantime... There's nothing, like, there's nothing official yet. Yeah, we'll definitely be praying for you and your family. That's got to be frustrating. Um, in the meantime, what I would like to do, Raphael, is uh, is introduce you to to our um, to our audience and let you guys kind of share your testimony of how you really gave your life to the Lord, how you came in to this new faith, how you got connected to Passion for Truth, and uh, and your body can 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 join in here as well. But just like share your testimony from like from the very beginning to where you're at today. And um, in our connection with all of that. Eh, bueno, sí, sin duda alguna, yo creo que eso es lo más importante que nosotros queremos hablar en esta noche y compartir eh, con toda la audiencia. Eh, y bueno, eh, es un imagínate. Basically, that's the most important part that we would like to share with all the audience. Eh, creo que necesitamos unas cuantas, no solamente tan poco tiempo, necesitamos unas cuantas horas para hablar de todo ese testimonio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, so, so it says that we might need a few hours to speak about the whole testimony because it's huge. <laughs> well, we don't have we don't have several hours, but we might have some time. We're going to do this again for sure, but this time it's got to be. Uh, maybe we should have your Madi tell it because she speaks a lot faster than you do. Yes, yes. Well, but yes, este, nosotros, eh, sin duda alguna, mi esposa va a tener que hablar un poco de esto mucho mejor que yo porque realmente el conocimiento de nosotros con respecto a, a lo que es las raíces hebreas, a lo que son las prédicas de, del pastor Jim, llegaron sin duda alguna a través de mi esposa. Yes, she will have to speak up also because uh, most of the teachings that you have on the website and, the, and also on YouTube came to me through my wife. She was the one who introduced me to this. Ella estuvo desde el, creo que desde el, del, del, del 2016, ella estuvo comenzando a ver las prédicas del Pastor Jim, que se la recomendó una hermana. Ok, she started on 2000, back in 2016, watching your, your preaches, because uh, it was recommended to her through a friend of her. Pero eh, ella, o sea, ella nunca estuvo como... ¿Cómo te explico? Como que no estaba como que segura totalmente de todo esto que ella estaba viendo, aunque estaba impactada e impresionada. Pero no fue sino hasta el 2020, cuando llegó la pandemia, que nosotros nos encerramos. Eh, y entonces, o sea, bueno, debido a la pandemia, pues nos tuvimos que encerrar y todo eso. Y fue cuando entonces ella me dijo, mira, yo te tengo que decir algo. Yo tengo tiempo mirando todas estas prédicas del Pastor Jim. Tengo tiempo mirando estas enseñanzas. Yo no quiero que tú te vayas a ofender por por debido a las creencias que nosotros tenemos, pero yo quiero que simplemente tú veas esto y luego me des tu opinión. Even though starting in 2016 uh, to listen to all those uh, teachings, she was not sure yet, she was not really involved into it until 2020 when the pandemic kind of show off. And then she started taking this like more seriously. And uh, one time she came to me and she said, listen, I want to talk to you about this. I understand that this is not what you believe or this is not what you've been teach, but I want you to listen to me about all this new information. Y yo le voy a dar la palabra a ella para que ella le pueda explicar un poco mejor con exactitud cómo sucedió entonces desde ese momento. Now I'm going to let her talk and she's going to explain us how everything happens. Bueno, chalón a toda nuestra audiencia latina que sé que estaban esperando este momento de podernos expresar como, como comunidad hispana. Sé que muchísimos de nosotros no entendemos el idioma inglés y cada vez que el pastor inicia una transmisión nos desesperamos para poder entender lo que él está diciendo. Shalom, everybody. I want to say hi, you know, to all my Hispanic community. I understand that most of you get desperate when you see the pastor uh, Jim start talking in English and nobody knows what's going on. But, you know, let's see what's going to happen today. Creo que nuestro testimonio no es diferente quizás al de muchos de nuestros amados hermanos que están conectados, que son fieles oyentes de las enseñanzas del Pastor Jim, 
porque nosotros, al igual que muchos de ustedes, hemos llegado al conocimiento de nuestras raíces en Yeshua, de nuestras raíces hebreas, de nuestra identidad como casa de Israel. Y sí, como mi esposo comentaba, alrededor del año 2016 yo comencé a mirar las enseñanzas del Pastor Jim. Our testimony is not different from anybody else. Actually, we start watching, we start seeing you know, all this teaching. Uh, and even though we came to the conclusion that this is the Hebrew roots that we have to like believe in and study in order to understand what's going on, even though believing in Yeshua as our Messiah. Sí, yo comencé a mirar las enseñanzas en ese año, pero ya para el 2020, con el impacto que tuvo la pandemia, creo que en todo el mundo, que se paralizó mucho el trabajo, incluyendo los juegos de, de la temporada de béisbol. Ok, even though I started, on, as I mentioned before, in 2016, uh, it wasn't until the 2020 when the pandemic hit, uh, hit us hard, that, every, that everything started getting slowing down, and even the, the Major League Baseball was starting, you know, start like suspending games and everything was falling apart. Yo le comencé a enseñar las enseñanzas del Pastor Jim a mi esposo. Eh, él no sabía quién era el Pastor Jim, no tenía ni idea, pero yo le dije, mira, mira esto, porque todo lo que este siervo predica está en la palabra. Y eh, es gratificante para mí cuando él por su propia cuenta puede corroborar que las enseñanzas son según lo que está en la Torah, lo que está en la palabra, y no que era solamente cuestión de lo que yo le decía, sino que él puede testificar por sí mismo que cada enseñanza que él iba viendo del pastor, él se enganchaba más, se apasionaba más y descubría la verdad en la palabra. I started introducing him, you know, all his, uh, all the uh, passion for truth and part of Pastor Jim Staley teaching, and he started watching, you know, like little by little was the whole process. But today he can verify, he can understand that everything that was preached on those teaching are the truth, are the life. So there's nothing, uh, no, nothing wrong on those teachings, and he can confirm himself that everything is, is the, is the real deal. No, y, y fue tanto el enganche que nosotros tuvimos, por ejemplo, con la enseñanza de crisis de identidad, por ejemplo, que yo creo que nosotros la llegamos a ver como tres o cuatro veces. Y eso, cada vez que el pastor mencionaba un versículo, nosotros simplemente le poníamos pausa, buscamos, corroborábamos y entonces continuamos viendo. Era algo impresionante. Definitely one of the teachings that gave us life, that was more, was most, that created more, more impact in our life was uh, the identity crisis. So we get to a point that we watch this teaching about four or five times. And what we did is sitting down in front of the TV, we start watching the, the, the video and then we press pause every time that there's a verse. So we went to the Bible and we searched the verse to see if what, what he was saying was, was real, was the truth. So we, 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 just deep, we just made like a deep analysis on that specific uh, teaching. Sí, entonces nosotros comenzamos a mirar estas enseñanzas y bueno, ya todos conocemos la situación en la cual estaba el Pastor Jim. Y eh, eh, el Pastor Jim sale en libertad justamente en el año 2020 y nosotros sentimos una emoción demasiado grande. Y yo comencé en oración al Eterno, yo comencé a pedirle en oración al Eterno que nos diera la posibilidad de poder con conocer al pastor, a su familia, eh, para nosotros expresarle de alguna manera nuestro agradecimiento por estas enseñanzas, nuestro cariño, porque sé que muchos de nosotros que hemos conocido la verdad de, del Padre a través de sus enseñanzas, sentimos ese aprecio por el pastor, por su ministerio, por su familia, y nosotros comenzamos a orarle al Eterno para que este encuentro fuese posible. Y realmente podemos testificar que lo que pasó en el año 2021 fue impresionante y sin duda alguna eh, fue Abba quien actuó, fue el Padre quien actuó para que nosotros pudiésemos encontrarnos y todas las cosas que pasaron contaron con ese respaldo del Padre. While we were watching all his teaching, you know, and uh, we spent a lot of time, you know, uh, studying the, wor the, the words, we, we knew the situation that Pastor Jim was still uh, in prison. Later on the 2020, he came out of prison and I started praying uh, along with my husband, like asking God that we wanted to meet him at some point, that we want to like, you know, have a church, some, some, some of the things that changed our life and everything that what, what was going on in all the process that we spent watching his teachings. 
today, I could, all I can say is that my family is being really blessed and everything's been awesome and fantastic when we're trying to follow everything that is on the, on the Hebrew roots. Y tengo que confesarles algo que eh, durante cuando nosotros comenzó la pandemia, que nos encerramos, que comenzamos todos esos estudios, yo no sabía, mi esposo nunca me, me dijo que el pastor Jin estaba en prisión. Y llegó un momento que, que ya, o sea, yo decía, pero, pero ¿qué pasa? ¿Por qué el pastor no sigue subiendo prédicas nuevas? ¿Qué está pasando? ¿Por qué? O sea, y ella todavía no me lo quería decir porque, o sea, the... como que, ajá. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, has, there is a confession that I have to make. Uh, while we were watching all those videos and I was getting to it and I was started, and I started liking what I what I see, I didn't know that he was in prison. So my wife later told me about this fact, and then keep going. Y yeah, entonces, pero ya, sí. Entonces, una vez cuando ya ella me dijo que él estaba por salir de prisión, a mí me sorprendió, o sea, yo dije, pero cómo es esto que el pastor está en prisión y yo, o sea, pero ya era demasiado tarde porque ya todo lo que había aprendido y todas las enseñanzas que habíamos visto, o sea, ya era muy tarde para volver atrás, ya estábamos totalmente enganchados y sabíamos lo, sabíamos que lo que el pastor estaba diciendo todo estaba en la palabra. Well, she finally, she finally confessed to me. She finally says, listen, uh, the pastor Jim is in prison. Because, you know, I was wondering why I don't see new teachings from him. Why I don't see new, new uh, uh, recordings, something new, you know, from, from, from Pastor Jim. Then she came to me and she said, you know, you, you know what? He was in prison and he's still in prison. But you know what, guys? It was too late already. I was, I was already in love with everything that I've learned from Passion for Truth. It was already late. I was already lost in love. <laughs> Y pues sin duda alguna ya, eh, como lo acaba de decir mi esposa, eh, ya luego que nosotros salimos de ese 2020 donde yo, o sea, no, no tuve la oportunidad de jugar con ningún equipo, eh, entonces viene Chicago, me da la oportunidad para yo volver al béisbol en el 2021. Y entonces nosotros eh, comenzamos a entender lo que son las bendiciones y las maldiciones, pues de nosotros guardar o no guardar los mandamientos. En el 2020, Adrian have a chance to play with any team on, on MLB. But then on the 2021, for the 2021 season, Chicago Cubs gave me the chance and uh, gave me the opportunity to join, to make the, 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 the team. So from there, we're starting seeing the benefits of being faithful, the benefits of, of, of being faithful to the Hebrew roots, to the Torah and all the commandments. Y bueno, pero yo creo que lo más importante eh, dentro de los mandamientos, yo creo que lo que nos llevó a recibir todas esas bendiciones, la puerta, como quien dice, fue el Chabá, porque cuando nosotros comenzamos a guardar el Chabá y comenzamos a entender las bendiciones que habían detrás del Chabá, fue cuando nosotros comenzamos a recibir, o sea, todas estas bendiciones de parte de Hashem, de parte del Padre, entonces todo comenzó a agarrar como otro, otro rumbo, otra dirección, y o sea, nosotros simplemente comenzamos a entender lo que es buscar el reino de, del Padre y su justicia y todas las demás cosas vendrán por añadiduras porque nosotros simplemente seguíamos haciendo lo que habíamos aprendido durante la pandemia y las bendiciones simplemente ocurrían sin nosotros, o sea, pensarlo, sucedían cosas increíbles. Something beautiful that I learned is that, uh, and, and the first thing that we started following was observing the Shabbat. After we started doing this, we see, we start seeing a uh, progressive change in our life. Seeing a lot of miracles happening, a lot of doors opening, a lot of things, a lot of pieces start like setting it down at the places that they're supposed to be. And definitely there's no regret from there. We keep studying, we keep learning, we keep seeing everything that the Torah tells us to do, which at the end is on, on our own benefit. So from there, we could see our life change in a dramatic way to 100%. Sí, y, y realmente aprovechando que en la fecha que estamos, que estamos en el, el 22 del 2022, del mes 2, eh, ese fue un número bastante eh, significativo para nosotros eh, en cuestión a nuestra reunión con el pastor, porque el padre se encargó también de que las cosas sucedieran 
de una manera muy espiritual en el sentido a un regalo que nosotros eh, le queríamos hacer al pastor, en el cual yo, yo me comuniqué con la mamá del pastor para preguntarle, nosotros queremos darle un, un regalo al pastor, ¿cuál será un número importante para ella? Entonces ella nos dice que el número era el, 2000, el 222. Sí. Entonces Rafa me dice, no puedo poner 222 en una camisa. Y yo le digo, bueno, pon 22. Entonces, eh, justamente... El eh, dos, pusimos el 2. Sí, pusimos, pusiste el 2. El 2, sí. El 2. Y la camisa llegó el 22. El 22. Justamente llegó el 22 de julio. De julio. El 22 de julio, just porque él tenía previsto, o sea, teníamos previsto entregársela en el primer juego que nos reunimos con, en, el, en el estadio de los dame cardenales. Chance, pero, da, pero, dame, dame chance, dame chance, espérate. Uh, sorry, uh, ok, we were looking for an opportunity to uh, bless Pastor Jim with a special gift, uh, something that he might like. Uh, we were trying to search for a specific special date of his life, like everybody else. Everybody has a special date, special numbers. So we spoke to his mom, and then she says that, uh, that, he, that, that what he likes is some, everything related with the 222 number. So then I was trying to Uh, then I was trying to figure out how I'm going to put 222 on the baseball, you know, player, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the teacher in order, in order to give it to him. But then at the end, he only put the number two. So on the last July, it was when we were planning to give it to him on the, uh, on the first Chicago Cubs game. Teníamos previsto entregarle la camisa en ese primer juego pero la camisa uh -huh. no llegó y la camisa justamente llegó el 22 con el número 2 y así se completó el 222 y esa fue una de las tantas eh, señales, bendiciones que el Padre nos permitió a nosotros vivir en nuestro encuentro con el pastor y con su familia. Amén. Ok, so we were supposed to give him the, to give him the, the teacher on the first day of the, of, the, of the first day of the season, but it was not ready. So you know what, guys? The T-shirt arrived on the 22 of that month. So it was like perfect. The number two on the on the on the T-shirt, and also it arrived on the 22 of this month. So that was the fact, the the day that we could see him and give him his gift. Amazing. We were. And, 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 and it felt to me, and, and and it felt to me like a confirmation from the from Haba that everything was like planned that way. Sí. No. Y lo más tremendo fue que yo, o sea, nosotros fuimos a su casa, el primer juego nos vimos, al día siguiente fuimos a su casa, que era 21, y el 22 yo estoy en el estadio y estoy hablando con el pastor Jim por mensaje, y él justamente me dice, o sea, está, estamos hablando, estamos conversando, y él me dice que ese día, o sea, hoy es 22, y acuérdate que, que el, eh, o sea, mi verso favorito es el eh, segundo, segundo de Timoteo, Timoteo. 2-2, 2-22, 2-2. Entonces, cuando él me dice eso, justamente en ese momento viene la persona, me toca en mi hombro y me dice, toma, aquí está lo que te, lo que te acaba de llegar. Cuando yo destapo, es la, es la chaqueta que tiene el número 2. Y fue cuando yo le mandé la foto al, al Pastor Jim y, y bueno, eso fue como una locura. So, on the 21st, uh, actually, was the date that, the, that, the, that we supposed to get it, to get it, to get the, the tissue manufacturer, but it never came, as I told you before. So on the 22, I was texting with Pastor Jim, you know, not talking to him. And then somebody touched my shoulder and said, listen, here, here is. And when I, and, and now, to my surprise, when I see it, it was, it was the t-shirt that was ready and the 22 of this month. So it was totally ready to give it to him. Amazing. I'm, I was so surprised about it. Entonces, nosotros nos sentimos muy conectados con el pastor y con su familia porque queremos aprovechar la oportunidad, Cheryl, a las niñas, o sea, son una familia bendecida, a, a los cuales amamos mucho porque el padre se encargó de, de dar esas señales y yo creo que mi esposo puede testificar el antes y después que él comenzó a experimentar en su trabajo, en su carrera, en lo que fue su resultado, luego de nuestra reunión, o sea, fue algo que el padre sin duda alguna se encargó de bendecirnos grandemente. I want, you, I want you to know, guys, that since the very beginning, we feel really connected to the Stalley family. Cheryl and everybody else, you know, his daughters, there's a special connection, connection between us. And all the signs that we've been talking about the teacher and everything, the way it happens, that's a confirmation that God has a lot of big plans in order for us to keep going with all these 
situation that I mean, it's not only about being friends, but it's about also to be connected for further projects. I want to say something real quick. Share if you're not going to, if you're going to, then do it in your own timing. Um, but what happened at the Hanukkah conference, I thought was absolutely incredible. And uh, that was another amazing sign that really impacted me. So I, I would like you to share that with our audience too. So listen up. If you're not listening up yet in the chat room, uh, this next part is really amazing. Okay. Might have to translate okay. that to her. Okay. Necesita la traducción o tú vas a hablar? Yo no entendí. Sí, para que se lo traduzcas a ella. Okay, uh, uh, Jim, can you please repeat that like slowly so I can? So, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I so, thought... so your Madi, do you remember what happened at the Hanukkah conference? <clears throat> ¿Tú recuerdas lo que pasó a la conferencia de Hanukkah? Yeah. Oh, sí, claro, ya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bueno, Sh este... Share what happened there. That was really amazing. Okay, sí. fue bastante eh... sorprendente. Queremos que no hable sobre sobre esto. Sí, porque son las cosas que hace el padre. Porque quizás nosotros Muchas veces podemos sentir eh, admiración, admiración, respeto por lo que son estos grandes siervos del Eterno que el Padre ha levantado. Pero nosotros fuimos, asistimos a la conferencia que el pastor realizó para Hanukkah y me pasaba algo bien. That's how the Father works. Sorry, sorry. That's how the Father works. Sometimes we see all those big leaders, uh, all those people that God is using. Uh, we think, we might think something different about them. We don't have a, like a clear perspective who they are. So here's what happened. Sí, entonces eh, nosotros estamos en la conferencia, pero yo particularmente no entiendo bien el inglés. Mi esposo sí lo maneja por, o sea, por su trabajo y todo eso, pero yo realmente no me he puesto a aprenderlo. Y entonces estábamos en la conferencia y yo realmente no estaba entendiendo casi nada de lo que estaba hablando el pastor y Cheryl. We, uh, I wasn't on, on the conference, but I was like really very on the understanding what was going on and what was the whole uh, word about. My husband uh, has a better underst has a better understanding about uh, of English, so he was getting everything, but I was like on the moon. Entonces, yo comienzo a orar el eterno porque días previos a la a la conferencia habíamos estado ayudando ayunando, perdón, y entonces en la conferencia yo comienzo a orar porque yo sabía que el Padre sí me podía entender. Y yo entonces yo le digo al Padre que si realmente él tenía un propósito con nosotros, este, para con el pastor, si tú tienes un propósito con, con nosotros en el ministerio del pastor, te voy a pedir una señal. Before that conference, we were praying a lot, especially, you know, I was praying a lot, you know, trying to, to ask the Lord that everything goes like the best possible way. So while I was there, I said, well, I don't understand what they are talking, but I'm going to pray to you, Lord. So I need a sign, I need something to tell me that you really want us to be together in this. Give me a sign that tells me that you want us to be working with, with uh, Passion for Truth and Pastor Jim Staley. Give, give me a sign, Lord. Entonces, la señal que yo pedí era bastante elevada, porque yo le digo al Padre, si tú tienes un propósito realmente con, conmigo en este lugar, porque no puedo entender con nosotros en este lugar, yo te quiero pedir que el Pastor Jim me pase al altar para dirigirme a la comunidad hispana. Ok, Lord, Here, here's the deal. I have a very, very high... How would I say that you really understand, guys? I have a really, really high demand. I want to ask you a really big sign. I want Pastor Gene Staley to call me to the altar and introduce me so I can speak from there. That's going to be the Entonces sign. Yo... If, 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 <laughs> if he does that, if that's the sign that's going, to tell, that's going to tell us that you want us to work with him. Go ahead. Fue impresionante porque justamente estaban entonando la canción Show Me Your Glory. Muéstrame tu gloria. Entonces, como yo entendía esa pequeña parte, yo eso era lo que entonaba, o sea, cantaba y lloraba. Y de repente sentí una mano en mi hombro y cuando vi al pastor Jimmy me asusté mucho porque yo dije, no puede ser. Pero al principio yo pensé que me iba a decir algo, pero ya luego tuve la oportunidad de pasar al, al altar y, o sea, fue una gran señal. Eh, al mismo tiempo fue como un sueño para, para mí porque las pocas personas que quizás me conocen saben que yo soy muy apasionada por la palabra, mi esposo también lo sabe. Y realmente para nosotros eso fue una gran señal del Padre. 
So they were singing and the worship team, show me your glory. Well, and that's the only phrase that I know of the song, show me your glory. So that's the only thing that I was singing, show me your glory, show me your glory. Then I had my eyes closed. So somebody touched my shoulder. And when I opened my eyes, I look at him, it was Pastor Jim. So stop right there. So I want to be a part of this because they need to see, hear the other side. So okay. I was on stage and Cheryl and the, tarima, Cheryl the other ladies were leading worship. And Cheryl leans over to me and says, I feel like the Spirit's telling me that someone needs to pray in Spanish for our Latino community. So, mientras estaban cantando, Cheryl se dirigió hacia mí y me tocó y me dijo, mira, yo siento en el espíritu que alguien debe de orar en español para la comunidad hispana. Now, you have to understand, there was a lot of Latinos in the room. I mean, 25% of the congregation at the conference was people from, from Hispanic background. Escúchenme, quiero que entiendan algo muy claro. Había muchísimas personas hispanas en la congregación. O sea, pudo haber sido cualquiera que yo, que yo escogiera. And even though I, I would love for that to happen, I immediately told her, no, I don't, I don't think that, that you're, I, I didn't say you're not hearing right, but I said, I, I don't think that's what we're supposed to do. Bueno, yo la miré y le dije, bueno, Cheryl, yo no creo que eso es lo que yo debo de hacer. No creo que eso sea una buena idea. But immediately, it, I mean immediately, the moment that I told her no, the Holy Spirit immediately spoke to me and said, yes, that is exactly Inmedi what I want to do. <laughs> Inmediatamente yo le dije a ella que no, que eso no era un buen plan. El Espíritu Santo me tocó y me dijo, sí, eso es lo que yo quiero que tú hagas. So... Mm -hmm. I've, I've never had the Holy Spirit over Trump me like that, that fast, but it was immediate. So I, I started looking around the room and I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, who do you want to pray? And I've, I felt this, um, just, I, there's no other word than, than instant pull that your Mahdi was supposed to pray. Bueno, no muchas veces el Espíritu Santo me responde tan rápido. Y yo me quedé mirando eh, en el todo el salón y estaba buscando, ok, ¿a quién voy a escoger? ¿Dónde me dirijo? So I, I walked off the stage. You can go back to the Hanukkah conference and watch this moment. You can see it happen. I walk off the stage. She has her eyes closed exactly the way that she said she did. They're, they're singing the song, uh, uh, Show Me Your Glory. And I tap on her shoulder and ask her, I feel like I tell her that I feel like the Holy Spirit wants her to come to the front and pray. And she just asked the father for a sign and said, God, if I'm supposed to be connected to this ministry, will you please give me a sign? And here's the sign. I want you to have Pastor Jim have me come up to the stage. And this is exactly what happened. It was amazing. Bueno, y, y si ustedes buscan el video, pueden notar que yo literalmente bajé de la tarima, empecé a caminar y me acerqué hacia, hacia ella, la toqué y le dije si podía orar. Entonces, podemos confirmar ahí que la señal estuvo, fue una confirmación directa. Ella está orando, que quiere una señal, que ella, que ella suba a orar a la tarima, entre tanta gente que había ahí, eh, de la comunidad latina, y justamente él viene y me dice, ¿puedes venir a orar? Increíble. Sí, yeah. so y go fue ahead, aún más increíble. Fue, fue aún más increíble porque luego que yo, o sea, que yo me levanté a orar, eh, el pastor justamente habla, a, abre la Biblia en el libro de jueces y, y, y lee cuando Gedeón pide señal al Padre. Entonces esa fue una nueva confirmación para mí porque, o sea, el Espíritu Santo hizo todo perfecto para nosotros. Por eso es que, o sea, mi esposo y yo nos sentimos muy agradecidos primeramente con el Padre eh, nuestro Yeshua Hamashia eh, y también con el pastor porque es gratificante que, que el padre nos permitiera esta conexión con él, con su familia, con su ministerio y estamos como a la expectativa de qué es lo que quiere hacer el padre porque sin duda alguna han pasado muchas cosas y estamos muy, muy entusiasmados con esto porque en nuestro corazón está el deseo de servirle a Donai y de ser parte de esta Another. restauración de la casa de Israel. Another confirmation was when he went back to the to the stage and he opened the bible on the gideon books i start like reading about the signs that was basically the end of of the confirmation so guys what we really have in our heart is help the community start helping to build the kingdom start like you know putting hands together 
to make it happen because we know that there's a lot to do and there's only a few people who are available to do it. Amen. Wow. So, you know, there's not too many people uh, that have the guts to offer up a prayer to the creator right in the moment and say, Father, look, here's how it's going to work. I'm not moving forward with this man, this ministry, this family, unless you yourself do this thing. That was a Gideon moment. Muy pocas veces, y esto es un momento gedeónico, muy pocas veces eh, alguien se para con esa firmeza y dice, mira, yo te voy a poner esto, mira, esto es lo que hay, yo te voy a poner esta prueba, y si tú me la cumples, o si tú me das una confirmación, yo voy a trabajar con esta familia. No muchas veces pasa esa situación, y es un momento totalmente eh, eh, impactante. Wow. So, your Mari, Rafael, where are you guys right now in your walk with the Lord? Tell us what is, what is he doing right now in your spirit? What is he teaching you right now? Because you guys are out of the country for all intents and purposes, waiting in limbo. Share with your, with the viewers here, like how are you guys navigating through that? And what is God speaking to you right now, your mind? ¿Necesita traducción? ¿Está bien? Eh, sí, un poquito ahí para que para terminar. Ok, para que... mira, eh, el pastor quiere preguntar, ¿dónde están ustedes en su caminar con Yahweh en este momento? Ustedes están ahora mismo en un limbo, están en Colombia, no es su tierra, están a la expectativa de que la Major League Baseball tome una decisión, están ahora mismo como en un limbo, esperando qué va a pasar. ¿Dónde está tu corazón? ¿Dónde está tu pensamiento? O sea, ¿en qué, en qué etapa espiritual ustedes se encuentran en estos momentos? Mira, yo creo que lo que nosotros aprendimos en el 2020 eh, fue increíble porque nos enseñó mucha paciencia, nos enseñó a estar en paz en medio de que estábamos pasando un momento bien difícil porque yo estaba sin trabajo. Y yo creo que ese aprendizaje que nosotros... Listen, the key here is that everything we learn back in the 2020, watching all the teaching and preaching, it's the key that gives us the strength to keep, to keep going. I mean, it was like the base. It was like, a, like, like something that is keep, keeping us strength, uh, keeping the strength in, in us, even though we are passing through this moment. Porque fue un momento difícil, fue una situación difícil que nos enseñó a nosotros a mantenernos en paz y a mantenernos confiando en que el Padre iba a ser conforme a su voluntad. Pero nosotros simplemente teníamos que seguir haciendo lo que habíamos aprendido, que era guardar sus mandamientos, seguir su Torah y, y dar, dar, o sea, con, con nuestras obras dar un buen ejemplo que, que el Padre se iba a encargar de todos los demás. Y eso es lo que nosotros estamos tratando de hacer en este momento. Okay, Jim, listen, there is a keyword here, keyword, and it's peace. As long as you have peace, everything else goes along. We know that we, we are on the wedding process now, but we learn, we, we really learn waiting. Waiting is something that not everybody likes. People, you know, get desperate. People want to see things happening, happening right away. But in this moment, it's just about waiting. And that's something that we learn from your teaching and preaching back in the 2020. Yo creo que todas las decisiones que nosotros tomamos y lo hemos aprendido mucho del pastor, si no van acompañadas de paz, yo creo que no, no es lo correcto. Si van acompañadas de paz es porque el padre quiere que hagamos eso. Something that we learn is that uh, anything that comes to you or to your life that doesn't bring you peace, it doesn't come from the Father. Everything that comes from the Father has to come together with peace. Peace is the word, is the key word over here. Y pues nosotros simplemente seguimos a, guardando los mandamientos del Padre, seguimos haciendo su voluntad y seguimos esperando pacientemente y en paz por una estabilidad, porque como lo acabas de decir, nosotros estamos por aquí en Bogotá, no estamos ni siquiera en nuestro país, que es Venezuela, pero a, 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 en medio de todo eso también andamos buscando una estabilidad familiar. Nosotros como tal no tenemos hogar, porque ni en Venezuela tenemos casa. Nosotros tenemos, andamos buscando un hogar donde establecernos y pues estamos esperando no solamente por nuestro trabajo, sino también por ese hogar donde nos vamos a establecer como familia y bueno, asistir a una congregación. 
something that we've been trying to find along all those years is uh, to get some stability. We, this is the time and date, date and time that we don't have a house yet. So we just like going back and forth, you know, trying to get something done. And I know that sometimes that bring you to an to an, an a very insecure stage. So we're just trying to be calm. We're just trying to be resting in the rest in the Lord promises, because there's a lot of things that we have to that we that we want to get accomplished. But it takes time and a lot of patience. Especially uh, talking Pero, about the fa the family area, we, we we want to be in one place, have our own house, and have everything organized in life. Pero sin duda alguna que en medio de todo eso, lo que no queremos perder es nuestra paz y nuestra comunión con el Padre. So in the middle of all those situations, the middle of the storm, what we don't want to lose is the peace and the connection with the Father. That's the most important part: keeping the connection with the Father. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, sí. Rafael, we we want um, we want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, your Mari, Holy Spirit says you got something else you want to say, so why don't you go ahead and say whatever's on your heart? Sí, bueno, eh, lo que yo quería de decir es dejar este mensaje claro para todos lo que lo que estamos viendo y los que vamos a ver este esta transmisión. La palabra de Dios nos dice que busquemos primeramente el reino y todo lo demás vendrá por añadidura. Y nosotros como matrimonio joven, porque somos jóvenes, 30 años, eh, podemos testificar de que cuando nosotros le hemos dado el primer lugar al Padre, muchas bendiciones han venido a nuestra vida. Si hay un mensaje que quiero darles hoy, y quiero que lo mantengan en su mente, es que busquen el reino primero y todo lo demás vendrá después. Don't rush anything. Don't be, you know, don't lose your peace. Seek the kingdom first. Amen. La fidelidad al eterno trae como consecuencia bendiciones a tu vida. Entonces, nuestro enfoque en este momento es mantenernos en oración, mantenernos en el estudio de la palabra, guardando chabá, que para nosotros es un tiempo de deleite, y orando al Padre, porque realmente hay un gran deseo en nuestro corazón de nosotros poder tener grandes experiencias este año en lo que respeta al trabajo de mi esposo, a lo espiritual, a, a nuestro, nuestra relación con la familia Stanley, pero todos lo estamos dejando en manos de, del Eterno y estamos orando. There is a lot of challenges in our life right now. You know, as my husband says before, we are in the middle of nowhere, waiting for something to, to, to show up or something to, to get materialized. But meanwhile, we're just trying to you know, keep the law, you know, follow the Shabbats and, you know, reading the word in daily basis, having a lot of prayer time in order to keep, to keep our mind together. Because there's a lot of challenges, as I said before, and everything is about waiting and patience. And you know, also, and, and, yeah. and also growing bonds with the Stanley family. You know, one of the things that's interesting for all of the viewers out there it's coming to me that in Hebrew, the word for wait, the word for hope, and believe it or not, the word for rope is all connected to the same root word, tikva. And that word... En hebreo, go ahead. En hebreo, la palabra tikva está conectado con todo lo que ustedes acaban de decir, con esperar, con paciencia. Esa palabra tikva es lo que define todas esas palabras al mismo tiempo. Yeah, and although there's several words for wait, it, it literally means to sit down. That, that's what wait means. It means to sit down. But when you connect it to its other root uh, words, its other work, root friends of family members uh, of hope, tikva, uh, which literally is the same word for rope, uh, you get this beautiful word picture of sitting down and holding on to a rope. Tikva es la misma palabra que va junto con la espera. Y no solamente estar, y, y literalmente significa estar sentado esperando. Totalmente sentado sin hacer nada, esperando. Y si sigo la conexión de la palabra, también añade y dice que es como estar agarrado de las manos en espera de algo. O sea, en comunión, en una misma idea y en una misma mentalidad. No matter what happens in our life and no matter where we find ourselves, all we have to do is hold on to that rope. And the reality is, 
is the rope prophetically is the zitzit of Yeshua, which is on the end of his talit. That is our power, is holding on to his zitzit, his rope. Uh, that is our hope, ultimately. Y cuando hablo de estar conectado en la esperanza, es como cuando ustedes recuerdan el Mesías, Yeshua, que usa los tzitzi en su, en su vestimenta, que son los, las tiritas estas que uno se pone adelante y atrás, que vienen como trenzadas. ¿Sabes de lo que me, de, a lo que me refiero? Sí. sí. Que son unas trencitas que nos colocamos en los pantalones, atrás y adelante. Es literalmente estar agarrado. Ustedes están ahora mismo agarrados de esas tiritas del, del manto de Yeshua, esperando en él. Amén. ¿Me entienden? Amen. Amen. Well, Irmani, Rafael, thank you so much for taking the time to to spend with us, sharing your story a little bit. I know that we, you've already spent three hours in my studio recording your testimony. We have not released it yet, um, but it is emotional and amazing, and I can't wait to have that documentary produced um, in the coming months. But until then, we're going to be praying for you guys that you come back to the States soon, quickly, and the Father will provide a home for your family, and uh, you'll be able to get settled and move forward uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals. I, I mean, I mean the Cubs. Uh, the Cubs. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's who you're playing for. So, yeah, so. <laughs> no, I mean, básicamente seguiremos orando por ustedes y esperando que puedan retornar prontamente a los Estados Unidos y que de, de verdad todos los planes que tienen eh, eh, les sean materializados. Todavía estoy trabajando en la grabación que hicimos en el estudio del programa que estamos supuestos a, a lanzar, que tú grabaste conmigo el año pasado. Todavía mm -hmm. lo estoy produciendo y ojalá que prontamente lo podamos eh, lanzar. All right. So thank you guys for being with us today. It's been a super pleasure and uh, we will see you guys soon for sure. Everyone say goodbye to Rafael Ortega and his wonderful wife, Yermati. See you guys. Tell Jeremiah hello. and Mary Angel that we said hello. And yeah, they're probably sure. watching right now. So shalom, shalom. We'll talk to you guys later. Hello. Thank you so much. And uh, Jonathan, you can stay on. To the next guest, our last guest of the evening. It has been a marathon of a day. But uh, we are nearing our very end, and our last guest is coming up here shortly. If you want to be a part of helping Passion for Truth reach the nations and really make an impact, would you please consider doing what others did for you and pay it forward for others to be able to do what, what, what you're experiencing right now? Everything that you're experiencing is literally tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars to be able to bring you this broadcast and have the staff available to be able to answer your questions and so on and so forth. I pray that you will be a true Israelite and step up to the plate and help us at just even $10 a month. If you will, if everyone that's watching this broadcast just partnered with just two lattes, just give up two lattes a month, and support us, we would be able to hire multiple people full-time. So we're just asking for you guys to do something very small. I'm not talking, you know, your whole life savings, but if you could partner, if this ministry, and only if this ministry is blessing you, and you are feeding uh, from the fruit of this ministry, we just ask that you would partner with us. You can text pay it forward, all one word, to 801-801. That's pay it forward, all uh, together, no spaces, to 801-801, or you can go directly to passionfortruth.com, our brand new website, and uh, and you can see, uh, you can donate directly there. And I'm excited about our new website. So if this is the first time that you're hearing about this, go to passionfortruth.com, check it out. It's really starting to come together. We still got a ways to go. There's a little few things here and there, but it's it's six, six and a half years in the making, and we're glad to have a presence online again. All right, my next guest is Moses, better known as the Shofar, the Hebraic Latino rap star from Mexico, coming up. 